So hi everybody and welcome back to the C++ tutorial series for Absolute Beginners. This is video 163 and in this video we continue with our class and we continue especially with our class constructors again. And the reason for that is we have not covered all things here. So first of all, we are here in constructors and member initializations, which we already started. We know the syntax here, how to um, declare a constructor. And we know also what it means now member initialization. We have here these two versions here. We talked about this one, this one. We skipped this parameter pack because when we read here this parameter pack, we can see uh, to understand a parameter pack in detail, we have to understand as well this uh, variadic template. And uh, template is a special section again, which is a very big section actually. And that's why we skipped this one for now. And here we have our example. And in this example, we have not talked about this one line here, actually. What is this line? We have started to talk about this example, I think, a little bit. But this line is special. And why is it so special? Because the definition is not inside the struct. In, uh, struct and class are similar. So you can say it's not inside a class or inside a struct. It is outside. And this is... Um, a little bit new and why is this so important to know that you can do something like that because normally you would not do this kind of stuff like this here which is demonstrated here because you would normally use this kind of stuff with uh, what i showed you in the last uh, video when we start with header files and cpp files you would put uh, all the declarations like they did here they make here const uh, um, they make here constructed declarations here on top in the header file and this definition you would normally put in the cpp file and then they are connected you can switch their um, uh, forth and behind uh, like you want but important is they are just demonstrating you here in this case that you can use a definition outside of a class and um, let's learn this one fast it's not too difficult but uh, there are something to consider and for this purpose i have uh, created here a new namespace i call this namespace house this time and i created here a very little class again i call it my first class the big house and my big house, you can see, has only one public variable. That's very important. I have to write here public because class has all by default uh, uh, private. And if I want to make this a uh, variable accessible from, let's say, when I create here an object, then I have to write here public. And I give this a how variable name is the house name. And all time when you declare variable names or functions or anything, it should be related to this um, class, which means if it's a big house, so it should be uh, something related to a big house. For example, a house name. What is also related to a house? For example, a house number, because house has all time names, perhaps numbers, and perhaps they have also uh, streets uh, or an address or something like that. But what sh you should not do is when you declare a variable, for example, my function variable one something like that you should not put in a big house class for example if you declare something like uh int math function variable something like that never declare something like that in a class big house and the reason for this one is normally this map function variable is absolute not related to a house class it's more related to a, a math class or a calculus class or something like that, which means we are not automatically associating this kind of variable with this one. But on the other hand, when you read a house name, you would associate this one with a big house. If you read a house, uh, let's make you one more int house number. Yes, you would associate this uh, variable automatically with a house at least this big house is not very important but at least this house because a house has most time a house number and so on right all right let's continue and you can see i have only declared now these two variables here no functions no constructor i wrote them just here that you know that we have these different sections and there would be also one more section actually 
which is oh, let's write them too this getter and setter section but of course these are just optional normally they don't write this here i write it here just for repetition normally this kind of section you write when you need it in my example if i don't need any of this one i would just write this here and that's it but we need this probably and the important is now this constructor we want to talk about this one and before we would talk about this constructor let's let me show you that this one is not only uh, made for constructors this uh, declaration and definition outside of the um, class is also uh, uh, it's also uh, valid for normal functions so let me create here a normal function which we know a normal function for example void uh, and uh, yes let's uh, make a function with print out our house number right so um, print house number void print house number it's just printing out our house number and this one is now a declaration and you can see here this uh, uh, uh this uh green scribbles that's indicating if you want uh, uh you had this uh, ide creates for you a definition i don't want it right now that the ide is creating for me uh, this definition and the reason for that is we ha I have to show you one more thing but before I show you one more thing let me show you what uh, yeah I want to talk about this access specifier one more time careful that you not get irritated by something like that only because you can't see here an access specifier right still here you don't see any access specifier means not this one has not an access specifier this one has an access specifier which is what it is this public here when you go all time up 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 it is the first access specifier what you see but what happens if you don't see an access specifier when you go up 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 like let's say i make here a variable uh, here and i put it here uh and what what's happened what happened so what is here the access specifier like i said you normally go up 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 till you find an access specifier but here you don't find any access specifier when you go up which means it uh, counts the default access specifier in this case it is a class and the default access specifier for this one would be yes private that's why we have to write here public and one more thing about this access specifier if you want to make this uh, function per public or private uh, you can still write here private to change it from public for example you say hey i want this function uh, private but right now it is connecting to this one so you can just write here private and now this uh, this oops and double oops and now this one is uh, a private function right so only this one just fast access uh, repetition about this one too you can just the best way is all time uh write the section uh, what you want uh, directly on top then you know all what comes after is that what you have specified here and then you specify the next thing what you want for example private and you put them in there and so on anyway let's continue so here i have a declaration and this one is just a function declaration right that we know and i said now we can put this outside of the class at least it shows us here we can put out outside of the class here is the struct a struct is the same like a class and they put it outside of the class here right and i can do this with my function actually too but let's check here is my class inside a namespace i can put it outside of the class but still inside on the namespace but the nice thing is if i want i can put it even outside of the namespace which means i use the global space to define my variable uh, my uh, function which is also possible so how i do this we make uh, first uh first outside of the class which is just normal like they show it here you are doing uh, you could get first of all your declaration here's the function declaration and to make a declaration a definition what we do is all time just add a body for it 
and it becomes a definition. Now, this one is already a function definition and we have here a little problem. And what is this uh, little problem here? Careful about this one here when you see something like that, because it shows us no problem, right? But this one is not this one. Why not? Because this here, what you see right now, is a function definition in namespace h, uh, namespace house, oops, house. This is just a normal new function definition. It's not this print house number, even if it looks similar. It is just another. And to make it a definition for this one, we have to specify it. What I mean with specify is we have to specify where this uh, declaration of this one is. So it says here, I'm a definition. And if you want to connect me to this declaration, you have to specify it and specify. We use this. We already know this colon colon uh, uh, resolution operator and this resolution operator do what all time it asking us where I should search the right thing here. And the right thing here is this print house number. And I say, okay, the solution operator find this right thing here, which is my print house number in uh, big house, because here is the class big house. Let's go in big house. All right, big house. Now I'm in big house and you can now see this one. What I uh, uh, what I made right now, this is the definition of this one here, right? Because now this and this is connected with this resolution operator because this one points exactly to this place here. So careful about this kind of stuff when you make it outside of a class that it can become a new function definition instead of uh, that what you wanted normally, a definition for a declaration here. And here one more thing. I said you can even put this one outside of the namespace if you want that's also possible which means i put this one here outside of the namespace but when i put this outside of the namespace you can see there is again a error an error right we have here an error and this error is just saying i can't find uh, this big house anywhere here and the reason for that is because this big house is covered by the namespace. We talked already about namespaces and namespaces means we can avoid name conflicts. And to access uh, now this namespace, we have just say, okay, find this big house because this big house is in the namespace house and go to the house. So I say to this resolution operator here, go and try find that what is on the right side, this big house here, you will find it in house exactly there so we have no name conflicts with other things else and you can see now this is working we can even define it outside of namespaces and this resolution operator will pinpoint exactly the place where it should go to find this here right it will go now to house big house and then exactly there it will try to find that what you have here on the right side which is this one nice and that was the demonstration of just a normal function you can see so we have a function declaration here a function definition here and of course we can do something here and write it out for example this is a function definition outside uh, of the class something like that all right and then we can do more and like I said, we're well, like the demonstration what they make here is they demonstrate that you can, of course, use a constructor outside of the class as well, because a constructor, like I said, is similar to a function, but has a little bit other syntax, but it's similar from behavior. It is just a function and this uh, constructor function is constructing this uh, class or struct. So I can do the same thing here. Let's do it fast. With the constructor because you can right now see here in my class i have no constructor what happens if i have not defined a constructor it will call the default constructor what is the default constructor it is an implicit created constructor by the compiler so i can what can i do with that i can create still a, a variable here without 
having any constructor here. That means a default constructor, which let's create a default constructor for my big house here. So how I do this again, let's say I want to use this big house and big house becomes what? The class becomes the type which I want to use, right? This is now my type, but anyhow, I have arrow. What happens here again? Again, I have to define this where this big house is. I use again the resolution operator and say, okay, oops, not this. I say, okay, find this big house in house. Go there. There is it. Okay, it is in my namespace. Um, let's make it so. In my namespace house, you will find the class house and this class, when I defect the uh, creating a variable name, it becomes my type, right? And here I've uh, declared uh, a variable name. In this, came, in this case, I call it coder's house because it is coder's house because I can uh, create another variable name uh, as well. I can create many houses now as well, uh, many as I want. In this case, it's coder's house. Let's copy this one. And let's paste this one here. I can create again one. This time I call it Maggie's house. And you see, we can create this kind of variables and these variables are called objects, but objects mean just uh, you are using a class here, like I did. I use this class here and you are providing a variable name. Yes, I did. And with this variable name, now I have access to this class here. Nice. What means again, access to have a class? You can use the variable name, for example, here, coders house and use this access specifier, which is a dot. Uh, I mean, member access specifier, which is this dot here and coders coder. Oops. Here is an ah now it will work coder house dot and you can see what we see here again we see all the public available functions or variables or get or setter but only which is public available careful it is not showing us what we have all in our class we still have to analyze it if we want to understand it anyway that's cool that's all fine and nice and uh let's uh, that was a little bit of repetition and now we see okay uh what happens with my constructor yeah let's make a constructor and oh should i make a constructor or i can skip this ah, i make a constructor because i sh should show you this one okay let's make a faster constructor because i think you get the idea i can make here a constructor declaration how we make a constructor again we write here the class name or well, struct name depends what you have big house all right and then we can write here this one would be a default constructor this would be a default constructor with a definition not so so but i don't want this because i say hey we want to declare it outside okay let's declare it outside and the same thing here we can do the same thing here what we have there and here Let's go here. Let's write here. Oh, because this time I a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, lazy. I copy this one. And interesting is, of course, a constructor has no return type or uh, or void type or anything like that. It just start with this uh, place where you want to go, where you should find this big house. Then you write here. Okay, this big house is here, and then you are just defining it. Uh, the body here and the only difference thing about this one here is of course i should to provide this one as well the only real difference about this two function is uh, of course they are more than a little bit different but we can as well initialize here some member variables with this constructor which means i can initialize here for example uh, with the default constructor here this uh, variables if I'm interested in how I do this again with this colon symbol here and you take then that what you want initialize for example I want give this house name when I create my house uh, default value for example I have here a default value but perhaps you want give another value but normally you would use not a default constructor then you would uh, uh, use a constructor with a parameter so that makes not really sense so let's skip this default constructor. Let's make it a not non-default constructor. <laughs> let's create a, 
STD a string and uh, house name house name Param and now uh, I use this one here because I want to use it and of course when I change here the constructor I should uh, definition I mean then I should uh, change the declaration as well so it fits together and with this one it looks good i have to define this one here and we learned how we initialize now the name i just take the parameter here i put it in so i hope this kind of stuff is very uh, okay so far and you know it the only real difference what i made here so far is i declared it outside and what is here why it is uh, complaining here so much let's see what's the point ah Oh god. Now I see what the point is. I talked much, but I paid not attention. I should paste it here, of course. Now it makes sense. Alright, you can see I accidentally put it in the function section. Uh here is the constructor. And now it works, and you can see I uh this is not uh, this is now a normal constructor, it is not a default constructor because the default constructor would uh have here a default value in the parameters let's assign it we can assign it here a default value which is uh, let's say let's call it also big house here but the nice thing is here this one is now a default constructor and i can use this one as well that's good so we have now this one we have uh, this is working the only thing which is probably not working now this one here let's see and it is not complaining interesting why it's not complaining uh, let's see i have here ah okay because we have still this uh, default constructor it is not complaining because yeah if you are using it this way it will use here the default value like this one but if you want to assign your own value for example i made here uh, coder's house i want that the uh, name of this house is now coder then i have of course uh provide this argument and we know argument means just right here coder in for example for this parameter here and it will replace now this big house and this default values all with your provided argument and the same thing maggie can do as well let's write here just mag now we have here maggie's house and uh, let's see what we have here what is that oh, oh yeah i forgot to do this one all right so i think that uh, should be now clear you can see you can do this with functions you can do this with constructors you can do this with uh variables and one more time normally you would use it here when you create later when we talk about this uh creating of classes and then this class here this big house would be normally i would make it here in this class section and then it creates a header file a special file a cpp file and this header file here would have only have these declarations here and the cpp file what you can see here will contain only these definitions here and this is the normal use case and that's why i said this one is not the normal use case you will not see this often but you will see perhaps sometimes some people demonstrate it or use it or for any reason but the normal case is like i said they put it in this cpp file the de definitions which is this kind of stuff and the declarations this kind of stuff they will put all in the header files but we will talk about this in detail when we come there so I talked much. Let's go here a little bit more. And here was one more thing which is very interesting, which I wanted to, um, just to mention, which can be irritating because I made here an example in one of my videos and said this one is a dummy value here. And I showed you in my example it works as a dummy value, but actually what they did here is not a dummy value. So why is this not a dummy value here on top? Because I said a dummy value is most time when you declare a type like this one here and provide not a variable name then you have no access to this type which means you are using this type uh, most time to distinguish between functions overloading because you can 
uh, let's say this um, this uh, default constructor here has no arguments and this one uh, with no arguments would be the same right but it's not allowed and they should be distinguished in type so sometimes they throw in a type and don't use it but in this case it's not the case because they have actually provided this uh, int here this int uh, a value i mean a variable and they made a uh, use of it so that's uh, also a little bit new what we learn here that you can provide here in the declaration you have no variable name but here in the definition you have a variable name which you can provide it that's new all right that that was um, yeah something which we have never discussed right now and i have not watched this one here and uh, yeah now I mention it yes you can do something like that we we keep this in mind and uh, i think uh, now you are able to understand this old thing uh, at least understanding and i hope you can use it as well the next thing is here one more fast thing here they just provide a default value which is just a random value so let's i make here a short pause because there are things which i want to talk here um but now there these are more little things which i have to talk but still i make here a pause because this video is very long and i hope you get uh, to understand that this kind of stuff can happen here and with that said yes i make here a fast pause and i still i think i will make the other things today as well and uh, yeah I make this sort of things as well so that we are finished with the site here at least with the basics not all of them but with the basics all right if you have any questions or any complaints like all time write it in the comments and in the next video we will continue here and see uh, why this one looks a little bit strange and what happens with this one and this one so we are finishing this side here this one we are skipping this delegate needs a special video again uh but yeah we are continue here with this we will understand here these examples all right with that said see you in the next video don't give up and uh, yeah you see we get better and better with classes but there is still a lot to learn with classes but don't worry when we are finished with classes then we we can say we are really powerful <laughs> programmers because classes can help us and yeah bye good luck